Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Sean Asher. I was born in Johannesburg, South Africa. And when I was a young kid, I always wanted to be a jazz musician. So at the age of about 21, I came to the United States to study music and pursue my career. Uh, when I came to this country, I brought this exact saxophone. I had saved about $500. I had a backpack with all of my possessions and clothing, and I went to Boston and I enrolled at Berklee College of Music. After about two weeks, I ran out of money. <laughs> it's amazing how far $500 will get you. So I made my way down to New York City, and I found myself a bartending gig, and I discovered the new school jazz program and I enrolled at the new school. And what I learned there at that time of my life would be invaluable for me for the rest of my life, for my personal life, my professional life, my career. As some of us know, there are only 12 notes in Western music. That's it. And there are infinite ways those 12 notes can be put together and played to create music. There are more than 79 million known compositions that are recorded out of these 12 notes. I'd like to ask the audience for a little bit of help. If someone can raise their hand, don't worry, you won't be brought up onto stage. Anyone? Can I raise your hand for you? <laughs> All I need is for you to tell me any three notes on, on, of these 12 notes, any three notes. B flat, C, G flat. Great, thank you. We're going to improvise. So we have B flat, C, and G flat, also known as F sharp. last note was also a B-flat. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. <clears throat> and thank you. So the improvisation you just heard was not just some arbitrary thing. It was a result of all of the practice that I've spent over my life and the culmination of all of the ideas and theories and principles that I've learned related to my instrument and music up until this point. In jazz, the note that is played in an improvisation is the culmination of everything that has transpired before that moment. And then you play that note in the moment with all of that experience behind you. The same is true in life and in business. And I think there are some serious parallels that I'd like to talk about. There are fundamental practices. If you were, say, to want to learn to play the alto saxophone, you'd have to learn some basic things. You'd have to learn the instrument firstly, the fingering, the technique, the embouchure, the reed, harmony, melody, tone, vibrato, rhythm, tempo. The same is true in business. If you were going to go into business, a lot of people go to business school and they study finance, economics, uh, operations, branding, marketing, how to take an idea from inception to completion, net profits, 
and apply those things to their experience in the boardroom. The decisions that are made in a boardroom are not just arbitrary. When you make a decision in the boardroom, it's based on all of your experiences from that point previous to that moment in time where you're making that decision. And all of the business principles that you've learned are applied to making that decision. But what is it, what is the one thing, and what is the one practice that is essential to make an artist different from another artist? What is the one thing that makes an entrepreneur come up with that one big idea and implement it into a big business? Or someone create a new technology to become the next big technology? Or an inventor to invent something? I believe it is the freedom to jam. Now, musicians do this, and it's widely accepted. They jam all the time. When a musician goes into a practice room and locks him, him or herself in the practice room for 20 hours at a time, people don't think he's crazy. It's widely accepted that you have to go and you have to practice your scales, your melody, your harmony, and then some of that time, you're going to be just a free thinker and think of ideas. Show of hands, who here has their best ideas when they're in the shower? Okay, it's not just me. Whew, that's a relief. Why is it? It's because we have no distraction. We have no outside distraction, and when the conscious mind is free from distraction, the subconscious mind is free to think and create. And that is the essential difference and practice that is needed. And for some reason, we accept and understand that musicians have to do this. But in life and in business, I think we feel guilty, there's too much pressure. If you have the freedom to think, or you take an hour of your day to go and clear your mind, it's looked down upon. But that is an essential element of differentiating the entrepreneur one from the other, one artist from the other, an engineer from the other, an innovator from the other. And these are the most essential practices that are needed and required, not only in music, but in life. This is Sonny Rollins. <clears throat> Sonny Rollins is regarded as, regarded as the greatest improviser of all time. <clears throat> In 1959, at the height of his career, he just disappeared off the jazz scene in New York City. Every single day for the next two years, he took his saxophone and he went up to the Williamsburg Bridge in New York City and he practiced for two years, some days for 16 hours, he sat up on the Williamsburg Bridge, free from distraction, and he practiced. When he was interviewed at the time, he said, eventually, I want to communicate, but it might take me being alone to learn how to communicate. That was very profound. And when he walked off the bridge two years later, he was a changed artist, and he went on to record some of his most prolific work. And we hear about artists doing this all the time. They give themselves structured time for unstructured thinking. And I don't think we do this enough unless we're a musician. And I think if we give each other structured time and the freedom to think, that is where most of the magic happens. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>